This title might be a case of false advertising. The movie is called The Brides of Dracula, which would lead many, including those who've read the book, to believe that it focuses on the three vampire women who reside with Dracula in his castle. However, these brides were not in the first movie, and Dracula himself is barely mentioned here. In reality, The Brides of Dracula depicts other vampires who were presumably followers of the Count before he was destroyed. The story begins with a French school teacher named Marianne being invited to spend the night in the castle of the mysterious Baroness Meinster. After seeing a Prince Charming-esque young man on one of the balconies, the Baroness identifies him as her son, who she was forced to lock up due to a sickness of the mind. However, he tells of how his mother really just wants his inheritance for herself, prompting Marianne to set him free. After discovering the Baroness dead the next morning, Marianne flees and runs into Dr. Van Helsing, who takes it upon himself to once again take up arms against the evil that haunts the land. As you might guess by that synopsis, the movie starts out on a fairly predictable note. The setup is nearly identical to that of the first movie, except now it's acted out by female characters. However, the film does throw in a few noteworthy changes that keep the experience relatively fresh. For example, the audience is thrown for a few loops when it comes to who can be trusted. The way in which it almost directly attacks a few of the fairy tale archetypes is pretty entertaining. Part of why it works so well is because of the performances. Peter Cushing returns to the role of Van Helsing, remaining grimly determined while never losing his charismatic charm. The fact that he has taken over the role of the protagonist and works just as well is truly a testament to his presence and abilities as an actor. David Peel also manages to impress as Baron Meinster. His prince-like demeanor and piercingly dry and cold deliveries make him a memorable figure that is always fun to watch. As the Baroness, we have Martita Hunt, who gracefully displays two sides to the character and causes her to have a larger impact than you'd expect, given her limited screen time. As for Marianne, Yvonne Mundlauer puts in an admirable effort to inject some intelligence and resourcefulness into the frightened naivety that she's saddled with. The same generally goes for the rest of the supporting cast. As is typical of the Hammer Horror films, the gothic architecture remains on display here, arguably more shadowy and sinister than last time. Unfortunately, with the exception of Van Helsing, the same cannot be said for the characters. They're not bad per se, but they're just not as strong as those of the previous film. On the other hand, Malcolm Williamson's musical score, though lacking James Bernard's more distinctive themes, nicely builds with its simplistic tones. In conjunction, Terence Fisher seems even more assured in his direction this time around, experimenting a little more with certain shots and angles. In the end, The Brides of Dracula may not reach the heights of its predecessor, and could stand to have a few stronger characters and more originality, but it is heightened by electrifying performances, a greater sense of mystery, more stylistic cinematography and direction, and a commendable continuation of the story.